Hello, Internet! Welcome back to Antiheroes in Exandria, or welcome for the first time, if it's your first time joining us. I'm Kay, the Dungeon Master for this 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons show. Before I get into the usual announcements, um, we'll start off with some player introductions. Nick, take it away. Hi, I'm Nick. I play... Hang on. I had this. I play Easter Stelberg, the human arts fifth warlock. Hi, I'm Ethan, and I play Zofdal Zephyrax, the Dragonborn Graviturgy Wizard. Hi, I'm Zach, and I play Bonks, the Bugbear Barbarian. Hello, I'm Melissa, and I play Angelica Jacobson, the Fearbog Circle of the Shepherd Druid. Well done, everyone. Top marks. Uh, announcements. So, we premiere our episodes on YouTube, Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific Time. Um, we are resuming our side adventure, which is set in Exandria, the world of Critical Role. Uh, we play music during our episode. You'll hear selections from uh, the Critical Role soundtracks. Welcome to Taldore and welcome to Wildmount. We also play a lot of music from Incompetech and sometimes sprinkle in tabletop audio and battle bards. Um, you can find all of the credits information as well as some other links for important resources and other things in our video description. Um, so go ahead and click that show more button to find out all of those juicy details. You can also follow us on co-host at Antiheroes. Uh, last but not least, we hope you enjoy the show. And if you do, share it with your friends and keep coming back to watch some more. Uh, that's about it for announcements as usual, and we will jump next into our intro video. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Welcome back. Starting off with a recap. Uh, during a race against Io's rival adventuring party at a festival in Jigo, the Quatrefoils followed a strange light to find the Jewel of Three Prayers. Picking it up gave them a vision of a man named Elixion begging to be saved from the darkness. Both the Quatrefoils and Io's group are headed to the demon-plagued town of Bazozan in hopes of learning more. But the road there so far has been littered with dangerous threats, including a toad-like fiend, carrion eaters from the abyss, and an opportunistic group of willow wisps lingering within an abandoned caravan. All right. I'm just clicking on a few things. Oh, that would explain why I can't hear anything. My volume settings have been a little weird tonight. That should help quite a bit. Okay. So, last we left off, y'all were walking along the road and Suddenly, from up ahead, you hear a scream, which was beautiful and a one-time performance because I'm not sure my microphone will pick it up this time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm going to throw some music on here. This one. Whoa! something like that and you crest over 
a hill to see ahead of you. There are a circle of these very large um, feline-type creatures, like black panthers, but the size of a horse, and they have tusks coming out of the sides of their mouths, up like a warthog, kind of. Um, there are three of them around the outside, circling one on the middle. The three on the outside have these bristles coming off of them that seems razor sharp, glinting in the sun, uh, the afternoon sun. Um, the one on the middle, the one in the middle is a little bit smaller, and it seems to be cowering. And it has what seems to be the figure of a humanoid clinging desperately to its back. What would you like to do? <laughs> um, how far away are we? Um, say at the moment, probably about 50 or 60 feet away. Okay. Angie, can you talk to these animals? Um, um, uh, I'm not sure I could talk to them this far away. Um... Uh, I yell at the person uh, that yelled. Uh, is that a yell for help? <laughs> Hello? So, yeah, the uh, person in the middle of this mess clinging on for dear life as your voice lands on him, the uh, creature that he is riding, which Zof and Bonks would recognize as a moorbounder, starts bucking. And so he's clinging desperately, and he was like, Oh, this would be really appreciated! Alright, we have this, consent, everybody. They're thrashing around. Um, Io, who is with her group, is looking off to the left, and she says... Um, she says, I think I see more coming down that way. We're going to go cut them off. Come on, everyone. And she takes them and they run off down the path to go and intercept another group of these large bristled moorbounders. Right. Well, Angelica, you hear sorry. the figure in the middle shouting, Come on, this one. Come on. Get a hold of yourself. Did you, are you not picking that up? Come on, rice pudding. Come on. Get a hold of yourself. <laughs> it's the, the AI transcript of that screen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I think what Angie's going to do is she is going to da -da -da -da, cast. Let me um, go ahead and pull you guys over the map so you can see what you're up against. Okay. You. Wow, these big. Okay, I think it's a click and a shift and a Z. Click and a swish. No. Click and a alt and a Z. Nope, that wasn't it. Control Z. Control Z is undo. Oh, that's true. Is it alt shift maybe? Z? Am I? Oh, I I don't have the select tool. That's why it's oh, not working. Okay. There we go. Oh. There we go. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. It's more bounder. These have. So that's that looks like eyes. a cancer. Yeah, that's the one in the middle. The other ones have the same portrait, but they look they technically look a little bit more ferocious. They're a little slightly bigger. They have the gross bris bladed bristles coming out of their shoulders. And stuff. Okay. Okay, so Angelica's gonna grab her medallion, say a uh -huh. quick prayer. Uh -huh. And she's gonna conjure one herself and send it hurling to the group. Can you conjure a more bounder? I can. You can. I can. Okay, yep, that's fine. Okay, so I, that sounds like initiative. Yeah. To me. So why don't y'all roll? And I'm gonna, you can do one, 
more bounder. So I'm just gonna copy this one, put it here, and give it that one, and controlled by Angelica. I'm going to tint it slightly blue. What kind of pudding is yours, Angelica? <laughs> um, well, if it's blue, let's see. Blueberry. Okay. Okay. Angie, That's original. Should, I'm not sure where you wanted to pop your more bounder, but you should have control over that one now. Okay. Um, and I'm going to switch over to my encounter. Um, if you guys just want to roll on your... D&D Beyond character sheets, it'll automatically, it should automatically track, so that'll make it easy for me. Okay. <laughs> I really, really good for my initiative off of D&D Beyond. <laughs> Did my nine get categorized, or, um, tallied there? Uh, yes. Yes, it did. Um, Angie, does your, it's, your summon spell, does your Creature act on your turn or its own initiative? It has its own initiative, I believe. All right, you're going to have to roll that independently, please. And let me know what you get. Okay. Like an actual die. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, do Riot, I add anything got a to it? Oh, yeah. Right. I, I can't roll hers on. Yeah, that's fine. Because I have to add her manually, too. Okay. Right. I got a 14. Let me double check. Did you get mine? Angelica got a nine, and the blueberry got a blueberry pudding got a two. Blueberry pudding <laughs> got a two. All right. Oh man, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna blueberry pudding is great. I'm gonna change this to blueberry pudding because that's hilarious. <laughs> Can y'all see its, own turn. its name tag on yeah. there? Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. So it is the humanoid's turn first. And as you can see, um, he is a where where are my notes? I have too many windows open. It's a constant issue for us. Um he is a scrawny looking little tiefling man. Um, don't let the portrait on Roll20 fool you. Uh, and he is dressed in simple uh, leather armor. Um, looks like he has somewhat good, like, lithe muscles but not a lot of like big upper body strength if that makes sense um but he's up first and he is going to spend his whole turn holding on to dear life as his mount is thrashing around i thought his mount's name was rice pudding it is Okay. That's one wild mount. <laughs> <laughs> Some medicine's making you delirious, man. <laughs> All right. So it is these uh, evil Moibounder's turn next. And we're going to do one here. Up one. There we go. Seeing this, they are coming in for problems i think this yeah these two are going to try and snap at rice pudding and then the third one is going to go after blueberry pudding so they're having a little bit of dessert let's see well let's see if they can we can give them a toothache a test cake oh shit hold on Yeah, that's fine. Um, so it 
gets two attacks on each of its targets. So we've got, let's see, what looks like a Morebounder dice. We'll do this one. Okay, one attack against Rice Pudding. That's a hit. Another attack against Rice Pudding. That's another hit. So, oh, that's not good. Oof. Um, okay, so I think what they're going to do, this guy's pretty much got it covered. So the second one, instead of getting there, is going to come. And he's going to... So Rice Pudding just took a total of 25 damage from that one more bounder. He's not looking great. So the other one is going to run up. Sorry, reading reading stat blocks. Bear with me. Probably going to bound up the more. Yeah, it is indeed what it's going to do. And its speed is yep. So he can he has a standing long jump of forty feet. So he just leaps. Oops, I think that's forty feet. And then he can basically run up this way. So he's going to come after Easter. Because you're a target. Because <laughs> you're a target. I'm not supposed to get hit. <laughs> there we go. All right. So two attacks against uh, Blueberry Pudding and two attacks against Easter. All right. Well... Of course I roll terribly against you guys and really good against my own NPCs. The first attack against Blueberry Pudding is a 10. Misses. Second attack is a dirty 20. Hits. Okay, so Blueberry Pudding takes 14 damage. First attack against Easter is, oof, a 23. Yeah, that hits. For 11 slashing damage as its bladed bristles are thwacked into you. Yep, that's the sound it makes. Mm -hmm. um, second is a 16 to hit. Yeah, I'm, I'm a squishy mage. Y yeah, I've learned. Um, that's another 14 slashing damage as it rakes its claws through you. Okay. And then that's their turn. Oh. Sorry, how much total? Uh, against me, it was mm -hmm. 25 total. Yeah, 25. 25. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Riot is up. Uh, okay, Riot's going to give me the help action. Because I'm Great. about to need it. Great. Okay. Then it is Rice Pudding's turn. Rice Pudding is going to disengage. And try to GTFO. So he can also leap 40 feet. For justice. No. So he, he oh. leaps 40 feet. And I'm going to make actually a strength saving throw for justice. To see if oh, he's no. able to go with him or not. This is not his strong suit. But I'll give him advantage because he's in the uh, saddle. He's in an actual like constructed saddle for this so yeah he's able to stay in there um barely but you see him clinging to his life clinging for his life to this uh creature that just ran up here 5 10 15 20. i think he can probably get to about there as he's like trying to run um let me update this too and do 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 do. All right. That is his turn. Angelica, you're up. Okay. Um. Um. How hurt are you, Easter? Pretty hurt. I don't. I like. If I get hit again one more time, I might go down. Okay. Oh. Um, Can you update your roll twenty token, by the way? Oh yeah. Sorry. Okay. So. Um. Angelique is going to give a healing word. 
to Easter. And I think it's 1d4 plus... Wait, cast it at a second level. Hold on. <laughs> Do you have Carowinds prepared? Oh, no, yeah, that, never mind. <laughs> mm, healing word at uh, let's do second level 2d4 okay so that's 3 and 3 is 6 so 10 Thank you. HP back and then I can't do uh that's bonus action. It's bonus action. Okay. Uh I think I want to take a couple of steps back to about probably right there. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so that and was it. He healing word is a bonus action. You take a couple steps back. Do you have an action? Anything you'd like to do as an action? Um, could I try to talk to the one by Easter? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, that's a f talking is a free action. You can talking talk. is a free action. Okay, well, I'm going to tell it to tell his friends that um, you're going to really get hurt if you continue this. We are prepared to defend ourselves. Maybe it's a good idea if you just take your friends and leave before you get really hurt, because my friends will hurt you. Hurt, hurt, hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Um, why don't you... None of you have really taken an action against them yet, so why don't you make an intimidation check with disadvantage? Because right now they don't... There's nothing to back up your claim. <laughs> with disadvantage, you said? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Twelve and a fifteen. So twelve plus nothing. Twelve. Well, okay. Um, they seem to understand you, which is you know good. But you can see the one closest to you baring its teeth, especially um, given what it had just done to Easter. Um, and you can tell that it's not convinced that you guys are a threat. And, um, it looks hungry. Okay. So then, you're still gonna let me have an action? Yeah, I can give you an action still. Okay, um... You sing? <laughs> Singing as an action. <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. I don't really have any good um, long range ones. So let's see. I sp uh, ten feet. Did you swap out bonfire? They used to have bonfire. <laughs> I, I did. Oh. Well, it's two d eight. That might scare him away. It's actually kind of a good idea. All right, let's put one. Let's put one under that more bounder. The one next to Easter, and I'll say, "I told you so." Okay, so you're you're doing bonfire under the more bounder next to Easter. Which square? Do you, it's only a five foot square, right? Right. Which square and, do you want to put it in? Um, either one. Anyone right below him. Okay. It's like this could have an effect on things depending on where you put it, but we'll just put it right there. Okay, dex save. DC's 15. Okay. 
Dex save DC 15. Oh, I don't have these guys labeled, do I? Well, we're going to call this guy. A. We're going to call this guy B. Ooh, I get 2D C. Now. Okay. Uh, okay. Dex save DC 15. Come on. They're big. Nat They're not very dexterous. Natural 20. <laughs> oh, you suck. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and that's just a cantrip, so it doesn't do any damage on a success, right? Correct. Well, but it's there. All right. Um, next up is Easter. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast. Um, mm -hmm. mm, I'm going to cast Hex first. Yeah, I'm going to Hex A. Try and put a little bit more pain on it. Gonna mm -hmm. hex, hex their decks, as you do. Okay. As you do. And then I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast at it. Not at disadvantage for this one, at least. See if I can do it. Does a 19 hit? Um, um, um yes. Great. Then I push it 10 feet away from me. Okay. Can you push a larger creature? Yeah, we've discussed this. Yep. Right? There's there's no size restriction on this push. Five, ten. Okay. How much damage do you do? Uh, I'll get to that because I have a second one that I can okay. do. <laughs> now, that, now that I don't need help, I can just do a second one. Mm -hmm. Also, not, not at disadvantage. Mm -hmm. uh, does a 15 hit? Yes. Okay. Then I'm going to push it off this cliff. <laughs> okay. Um, it's uh only five feet. Okay. So okay. add a d6. No okay. Or you can add a, add a d6 to your damage. That's fine. Sweet. Well, I was going to do that anyway for Hex, but I'll do another one for the fall. I guess, yeah. We'll call it ten feet. Give you okay. d an extra d6 for the fall. All right. Where's my d10s? <clears throat> Here we go. Um... Actually, give me a second. I need to look something up here. I use Hex so rarely that I forget <laughs> how much damage it does. Okay, there we go. This is uh, 12 Force and 6 Necrotic and 4 Bludgeoning. All right, give it to me together because I can't do math. Sure, sure. 22 <laughs> off hold. Okay. Thank you. Um... Easter is then going to move here. I'm going to crawl under these spikes, hoping sure. to use my size against these creatures' size. Sure. I mean, most of the map is just fluff, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and that's is the end of my turn. that your turn? Okay. Thank you. Then it is Zof. Okay. I came up with about four plans over the course of that turn, and <laughs> everything changed, and now none of them are good plans. Oh. So, hmm. Um, yeah, I will cast, we'll do the classic Dragon's Breath uh, spell on myself, so that um, ghostly... Old Faithful. Yep, the ghostly... Um, form of a spicy pepper appears in the top of the staff for just a brief moment before vanishing and converting to lightning, which flows down the staff and into Zof's body up to the mouth. And then I will go uh, down here next to Blueberry Pudding, and let's see if I can use this new feature here to draw from me a cone! Whoa, <laughs> what? Would you look at that? Look wow. at that beautiful cone. Yeah. <laughs> Roll 20 did something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so it needs to make a dex save. A dex save. All right. 
No Another more natural twenty. <laughs> uh, it's a natural oh. two. Okay. So. Uh, I was gonna say, did did I say the level I was casting it at? I was going for third. If I didn't say. I don't know if you said, but sure. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, it fails spectacularly. Uh, let's see. Which goes up by one d six. So this is four d six of nice lightning thing about damage. Being a warlock, as you never have to say. Yeah, just max max level every time. That's fifteen points of lightning damage. Great. And it takes it like a champion. Okay, and then I moved, what, 15 feet to get there? So I'll go 5, 10, 15 back. Okay. More, more shocking. Very shocking. That's Bonx, you're up. Yeah. Which side to go on? How hurt does that one look? Is it Look okay still? The one that he just shocked? It looks alright. Okay. I mean, it's singed. Did blueberry pudding already go? Uh, blueberry pudding rolled very low, so blueberry pudding is after you. Okay. I, I rolled a two, or a four rather, so I guess. Yeah. Worse blueberry than that. pudding rolled a two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, well. The one case where I wanted it to go first. <laughs> I guess I'll go... Too bad. Oops, I will move myself here. And I'm going to fly into a rage, as you do. Uh, take my glasses off, and I'll make two attacks with the Moon Lance. Mm -hmm. I need to come up with a diplomatic name for Um <laughs> I feel like that's like all my weapons are going to be like that. Mm -hmm. Alright, here we go. Let's see. Okay. Does a 18 hit? Yes. Great. And they both hit. Um, that's six. Ooh, pretty good. Oh, I need to. I always forget this. That on. And then. Okay, so that's, that's 14, eight is 22. Total 22? 22 damage, yep. For both of them? Okay. Yep. Okay, thank you for doing that. Zach, have you right. considered counter offer? <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> I have not, but uh, I will now. Uh, I think that's all I can do. I did. I moved bonus action action. So, yep, I'm done. All right, then it is at long last blueberry pudding's <laughs> turn. <laughs> Blueberry's pudding is gonna shake its head like you should listen to my master. Mm. Okay, so it gets um, it gets two attacks. Uh. So we'll do the one in front. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, what do I add? Six, 16 for the first yep, that one. Hits. Yep. That okay. Hits. So that's a blade attack. So it does. Uh, Hold on. I... Are you looking at a more bounder or yeah, a bristle? More bounder. A more bounder or a bristled nope. more bounder? Bristled Moorbounder. I don't know if you're able to summon a Bristled Moorbounder. Well, it's on my page, so I just... On my account, so I, I just assumed I could. I assumed it was a regular Moorbounder. Um, let me take a look at your thing. Conjure animals. I don't know where you got that from. That's fine. Um, yeah, you can't, you can't do a CR3. It's got to be CR... <laughs> Two or below, so a normal okay. Morbounder. Just a grab the stat block for the normal. normal. Okay, got it. Yep. You could actually have two of two normal Morbounders if you wanted to. Well, let's do that then. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, what's that one put oh, in so it just it's just one um one attack then. 
that they get. Yes. Yes. All I right. was like, hang on. That's you're looking at the stat block for the things that I am <laughs> controlling, and that's too powerful for you. Okay. So what's Adam the other one's name? Again. Well, <laughs> why does it? But why does it put it on my? I just we'll don't figure that out it later. Let me do it when I. Okay. Uh, I don't right. understand either, but we'll figure that out later. For now. Um. Okay. What's so the other one's name? Says, Blackberry pudding. <laughs> Blueberry, let's see, and uh, what's another thing that's blue? Um, boysenberry? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Is boysenberry okay. blue? I don't know. <laughs> I think so. It's so. kind it of purple. We're 44 well, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put that one over here. Because if it existed in the other place, it would have been blocking things that happened mm, already. So true. we're just yeah. going to say it was right there. Okay, so it hits. Right and there. it does 44 damage, which is 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, so 11, 44 plus 4, right? 44, oh. Plus four, so so fifteen. Sorry about that. I so specifically it, looked and I missed it. F fifteen damage uh, from blueberry. From blueberry. So let's okay. say blackberry. Blueberry and blackberry. Okay. All right. So um, this one is Dunzo. Woohoo! I can remember how to use roll twenty. Blah. Okay. So um. He has a movement speed of 70. So mm -hmm. let's go let's go move him down to this one. And he got a 16. That hits. All right, let's roll these babies again. Ooh. <laughs> I rolled two fours and two threes. <laughs> um, Dang. Okay. So that's 16, 14 plus 4 is 18 damage. Jeez. Clunk. All right. That's my lightning did. That was a third mm -hmm. level spell. <laughs> that was real good. That was real good. All right. So I'm just going to stand there menacingly then. All right. That is their turn. Okay. Um, back up at the top, we've got our little tiefling friend, and he's going to spend his action. Um, he's going to roll animal handling to try and get rice pudding under control. Um, so let's see how well this works. Come on, buddy. You can do this. Yeah, that was that was what I needed. Cool. So in the corner, um, up on the hill, away from the battle, you can see, you can hear the tiefling just saying, "Come on, rice pudding. Come on, calm down, girl. You'll be fine." And uh, the creature is starting to thrash less. So that's happening up there. Um, it is the big scary one's turns next. Um, so. The one that Blackberry Pudding is threatening is going to attack him. So we've got a... Natural 20. On Our one. Spaghetti. And a uh, 11 for the other, which I believe misses. So I'm going to roll the natural 20 damage. Oh yeah, I've got it. It took blueberry took damage earlier, so I've got to change that because it's a different. She took fourteen damage. So okay. Okay. Well, I rolled very poorly here, so you're you're very lucky. Um, and you're lucky that it critted on the first attack and not the second, because the first was the the weaker one. But it got. 15 slashing damage. 
Okay. From from the crit. Oh, let me put that on there. Um, and then that one's dead. And then this one that was pushed off the cliff is going to jump back up. And it's going to jump over here. Kind of bobbing and weaving. And it's going to do a... It's going to get Zof on the way by, way past, with its blades on its back, or attempt to. And then it's going to swing its claws under the spikes at Easter. Can I ask if I have... Uh, go ahead. Please, yeah. No, please. Can I, can I ask if I have any partial cover from being under these spikes? Um, no, because they're above you and not in front of you. If that okay. makes sense. Okay. Um, and we established that they're, it's 10 feet up and it's kind of reaching its claw in to get you. So, um, gotcha. at this, does, so. Does it have enough movement to go around my threat area? Because if it yes, goes, it, uh, it does. It went, it, it went uh, around around above Zof and not through by you, yes. Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay, for Zof, it is a 12 to hit. Won't do it. Yeah, and for Easter, it is a 21. Easter is the harmony of this campaign. Mm -hmm. I roll unnecessarily high to hit Easter <laughs> when I don't need to. And I roll like shit against everyone else. So now that I've learned that. Um, so that is another 14 slashing damage on Ooh. Easter. Okay. Um, let me roll a concentration check. For Hex. Okay, fast. It's snarling and looks like it's... Very intent on feeding tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, Riot is up next. Okay, Riot's going to help me out again, because I'm going to need to do basically the same thing I just did. Yep. Okay, then it is Rice Pudding's turn. Rice Pudding is going to spend its turn calming down. <laughs> Um, it's not getting anywhere close to combat anymore. It's going to hang out. Angie, you're up. Okay. Um, how, how hurt is rice pudding? Very. Okay. So a Angie's going to go closer. Mm, probably about right here and cast healing word on rice pudding okay. second level okay i thought i did that there we go okay 2d4 that is five plus four nine hp nice okay and i'll talk to uh him her <laughs> him her and say it's okay, buddy. We're trying our best to help. It's going to be over soon. And rice pudding looks at you appreciatively. As appreciatively as a panther with toad eyes can look. And All right. <laughs> pig tusks. <laughs> Alright, so on that um, bonfire, I'm trying to see if I can move it or just let it go. We'll let it go. And okay. we'll, we'll just cast, let's see how far, 60 feet. Mind you Where that you I? have, um, you used a spell slot, right? So you're limited to cantrips for your actions. Yep. Okay. Great. Bonfire is a cantrip. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So we'll just do it right there. On that one. Sorry, point one more time. Uh, to this guy. Okay. Wait, right. wait. I still have movement, right? 5, 10, 15. Uh, let's see if I can reach him. Okay. Oops. If I move down here, 
I still had movement. Uh, let's see if I can reach him then. Nope. I don't think I can. All right. So we'll just do that guy. Okay. Dex, dex save. Okay. Uh, that is a 15. It meets. It meets? Okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. I really want that to work. <laughs> Someday. All right. Is that it for your turn? Yep. Okay. Easter, you're up. All right, I'm going to try this again. Rinse and repeat. Yep. Still got Hex up, so that's a plus. Mm. Uh, let's see. Does a 13 hit? No. We found their AC. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, you? Then, then my second one is a disadvantage. Yep. But I think it's okay, because a 16 will hit. Yep. So I push it 10 feet away from me. Oop. Oh, and Oop. I do some damage. Can't forget about that part. That's the important part. Oh, there goes. One. One. Two. Yeah, that's that's 10 feet. Uh, 13 damage, all told. Okay. Um. I guess I would like to climb this little cliff here. Mm-hmm. So that's like 10 feet of movement, I guess. I think you need to make an athletics check okay. to climb. Okay. Cool. Uh, my athletics check is a 10. Yeah, that's enough. That's fine. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to run over to Justice. What I was looking for. Each foot of movement costs an extra foot when you're climbing. Oh, okay. So I don't have enough room to go to this. So I can go next to Angie. Okay. 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 I'm just checking the rolls. Okay. So you run up to Angie. Mm -hmm. Are you on top of Angie? I'm north of Angie. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> That's like <laughs> the name tags are layered. What is yeah. happening? Okay. Anything else on your turn? Yep, that's it. Okay. Uh, then Zof is up. Um, I will give this more bounder right in front of me a zap since I have the dragon breath spell active. Mm -hmm. And I can conjure a cone just like that. Mm -hmm. Isn't that easy? <laughs> it's great. So, so nice. It's like um, an advertisement for Rule 20. Right I'm just here. so happy about this feature because cones were the bane of my existence beforehand. And now they're so easy. Uh, <laughs> oh so death God. save. Where is that in the little thing? Sorry, I don't mean to um, that. I'll ask later. Yeah. I can tell you later. How'd the deck save go? Oh, sorry. I was admiring the range. <laughs> or the, the the cone, rather. Natural 20. Okay, half damage. <laughs> Oof, bad damage. Um, half of 11 is 5, so... <laughs> okay. Little tingle. Uh, yeah. Then... I think I would like to go 5, 10, and then try to climb up the wall after Easter. Sure. Athletics check. Um, Zof, not typically great at athletics. I made it up with a minus 1. Oh, I know. DC 10. <laughs> it's DC 10. I've got a minus 1 as well, but I rolled an 18. So Great. <laughs> yeah, you can get up there. I'm a climber. Totally fine. There. Yeah. Uh, that's another 10 feet, so then I should have 10 left. I'll just try and put myself between Easter and this Moorbounder, um, because I know I have a bit more defense, and I will just hold up a claw towards it. Great. Okay. 
Bonks, you're up. Um, seeing his entire party pretty much scale this small cliff, I think he also wants to scale that small cliff. <laughs> I might okay. Go up there. <laughs> Where are you guys going? I guess we're climbing this thing. Um, but actually, I'm going to run over here first. Oh, that's a bonfire. Is that what that is? That red dot? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Right, I'm not yep. going to stand on the bonfire. Don't stand on no. the bonfire. Actually. But Angela would, would uh, extinguish it if the more bounder moved away from it. Okay. Which, yeah, it was pushed away. Okay, so if it's not there, then I will stand there and I will make two attacks. I need to. I will need to, because I think the first one's well. Yeah. Probably not going to hit. Okay. So does a 15 hit? Yep. Great. Uh, so one miss, one hit, and that is 12 damage. You should probably... Huh? Oh, total? Yeah. Yeah, okay. How do you want to kill this thing? Um... Yeah, I think I'm just going to stab it right into its eyes. Uh-huh. Yep. And then just, like, let it sink down to the ground. And then, um... That was my action. I move one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm not going to follow you guys because that one's gone. I will go one, two, three, four down this way towards the next one. Those okay. Two attacks. I don't have a bonus action. That's it. Okay. Blueberry pudding and blackberry pudding are up. Okay. So let's see. Blueberry pudding went first. Let's move blueberry. You could have blackberry. They're on the same initiative, so you can make you can do them in any order. Okay, it has a lot of movement, so I think it can get there. No problem. I just want to block it from everybody with these guys. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, all right. Mm -hmm. So the attack, the attack, the attack. Do, do, do. do you want me to just do them both at the same time? Why don't you go one at a time? Fails, that's a two. What did they get? Oof. Bonus. That's only an eight. Okay, come on. Black. It is a 16. That hits. Okay. So, 44 plus four. Yeah. Five, six, seven. So, 11 damage total. Okay. Um, blueberry. Okay. That's it for them. Trying to do math in three places. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, then the tieflings up again first and i think with you guys coming up and with rice pudding kind of in a better place uh the tiefling dismounts and runs up to the edge here and takes out a longbow from his back and he's gonna try and um shoot this thing so we're gonna use yes yeah. yes they wouldn't Do listen it. to reason. Do it! Do it! They're not listening to reason. We're going to do this one. Okay. Um, I missed to my... Nope, that's a miss. Your name it's is true, very... though. Second one is a hit. Um, So he does six hole piercing damage against him. As one arrow gets him. And he's like... Oh, oh, I got him! He like starts dancing. <laughs> um, then it is the creature's turn, and I think he's going to do, let's see, I think he's going to lay into blackberry pudding. Two attacks against blackberry pudding. I'm going to do this one like this. That's a natural one. That's another natural one! 
Okay, you are going in jail. I switched dice for that. I should not have done that. With yeah, you should roll the dice you always roll against me. <laughs> well, I was using the same one the whole time, then I was like, I'm gonna use a different one this time. Nope. Um, alright, Riot's up. <laughs> okay. Uh, Riot's just gonna fly back to Easter side. End of that turn. Great. Yep. Um, Rice Pudding is gonna hold Rice. an action. Right, starts basically just like licking Easter's wounds. Yeah. Rice Pudding's gonna stand kind of protectively and hold an action to attack if the other thing gets nearby. Even though he looks scared and shaken. Angie is up. Okay, um... <laughs> Easter, you're looking pretty hurt, and that thing looks almost dead. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about me. Don't don't okay. waste another spell on me because I think this fight's gonna end before I get hit again. But okay. who knows? Who knows? All right, do you have it might just be Easter more? season. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna. Rice pudding still looks really hurt. I want to heal, heal rice pudding again. Okay. Okay. What do I have left? Yeah, I still have a. I still have one more. Okay. Ooh, good. Six plus four, ten HP. Wow, that was really good. Yeah. Say, poor baby. Yeah, rice pud pudding is looking much, much better after that. And then I'll hold an action if the Moorbounder comes up to attack us. Okay. I will use Flame Blade. Okay. I think Flame Blade is a bonus action. Okay, I'll use my Scimitar. Okay. Okay, then it is Easter's turn next. Easter just strolls next to Angie and casts Eldritch Blast. Well, actually, she's going to move the hex to this uh, to this new creature to see. Mm -hmm. Um, and wait, did I did I roll concentration? I'm not sure I did. I you did. Well, you said you rolled, were going to. I rolled the first time that I got hit. I don't think I rolled the second time. Oh. Uh, I, okay, so it's still up. So. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to target it with two Eldritch Blasts. Okay. With my dice. A 15 hits, right? Yep. Then they both hit. Then I'm going to do... Hmm. I guess to do a bunch of damage because of Hex. Okay. Um, 14 damage all told. Okay. It is still standing. Dang it. Ah. I rolled low on those. I rolled, <laughs> rolled an 8 and 3 twos. Zof. Sorry, was, Easter, was, was there anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Zof. Uh, Zof will go put a hand on Easter's shoulder and say, don't worry, I got this, Captain. And uh, we'll do the real old reliable, which is magic missile at first level. Oh, I thought you were going to say catapult. <laughs> <That's your laughs> catapult! Do it. Do it. Uh, no, I don't have it prepared. Old unreliable. It's not, <laughs> it's not prepared. Um, <clears throat> three darts at first level, so... Okay. Uh, that's... <laughs> Uh, it was nearly max damage. Um, 13 points of force damage. How do you want to do this? Um, the glowing darts of force just weave in between Blueberry and Blackberry's claws as they are lunging for attacks simultaneously. And the, the darts almost seem to merge with, you know, their claws as they strike. And, uh, a simultaneous takedown. Great. 
All right. But it's and just we dessert. are officially out of initiative as all of the threats are gone. You can hear a little bit of the sounds of combat and swords and, and crashes and stuff from off in the distance um, as Io's group is taking down um, one of their own. Um, but after seeing this display, whatever other Moorbounders were part of this pack have decided that they had better get out of town. So they start running off. Um, and, uh, yeah, everything's quiet. Sorry, I'm trying to remember what song I needed to, okay. Um, yeah, the tiefling scout, um, puts his, his bow back on his back and, and, uh, kind of checks on rice pudding and then stands up and says to you, Right, I don't know what I was going to do if you guys hadn't showed up. You would have died. Yeah, I would have. That's what we would have done. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, how, how is, uh, <laughs> how does he your look? Little, how's your guy? How does he look as, as in, as in like, how bad is he hurt? He is jostled and has some cuts and bruises, but um, otherwise he doesn't seem severely injured. Seems like the Moorbounder took the brunt of the hit earlier. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, you were saying it, Melissa? Uh, yeah, poor Rice Pudding. How is he doing now? Oh, he looks Sorry. all right. He looks all right. A little, um... He took quite a few scratches back there, but I think that he'll be fine. <laughs> oh, uh, he's a lot better off than you lot are, though. Kind of giving Easter a look like, holy crap. <laughs> Easter looks at the rest of her completely unhurt party. <laughs> uh, maybe we can maybe we can get Dermot to look at those once we reconvene with the other group. Well, they had a name, right? Now is the the shark riders shark shark bait shark tooth. Ooh ha ha. <laughs> Ooh ha ha. Anyways, shark, we can get, we can get Dermot to look at it. Maybe where. If I can, if I can switch between accents four times in one character, so can you. <laughs> like, I don't even know where I'm going with this. Um, the tiefling is kind of looking at you all and he says, um, where are you, if I may ask, all going to? Going to Bazazan. Oh. Then you'll be heading uh, east from here then, I reckon. If you're, are you planning to, um, are you plan planning to stop at the Emerald Loop Caravan stop about two days from here? Is it, what's there? Uh, well, it's, it's a pretty big, well-known, uh, stop. Everybody traveling this way stops in. There's some merchants and, uh, a couple of places to, you know, water your, horses or more bounders or or whatever and uh and uh, just a, a nice safe place in the the in the forest about two days south of here so uh, where that's where i'm turns east because yeah. we were just planning on following the road so yeah if you follow the road you won't miss it i'm i'm heading there myself uh i'm a scout for a, a caravan um they're a couple day behind me or so Oh, um, I'm not sure you have a job anymore. What? Oh, no. Oh. Well, it could be a different caravan. Could be. Uh, <laughs> did you know someone named... Uh, i got to check my notes for a second here. Oh, on the dagger? 
Uh, Someone named uh, Krishali Wastewalker. I need my stat block here. He scratches his chin. Uh, no, I don't reckon I know that name. It's uh, well, Wastewalker is pretty pretty infamous in these parts, but oh, I don't know no Krishali. That was a different encounter. We got that one from the Carrion, not from the Will, Will of the Wisp site. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I wouldn't have asked that question. I forgot where that dagger oh. came from. Oh, okay, okay. Um, this... Yeah, we, we passed the caravan not too long ago. Uh, there was no one there, just, a, you know, carts on the side of the road overturned. I see. Well, um... I guess I, I ought to go take a look then. As soon as, uh, as soon as I give Rice put in here a chance to rest. There were uh, some nasty will-o'-wisp creatures inhabiting the area, and we only took care of one or two of them. There, some of them got away, so approach with caution. Yeah. All right. Yes, but thanks for the information about the stop. It sounds uh, like a good respite. Yeah, it's um, it's a very welcome safe zone here when the roads are real dangerous, like. It, listen, I, I'm going to have to ride back then to go check on this, this caravan, um, but it's not uncommon to find stuff like that in these parts. Um, doesn't sound like my group, but... I'm going to check it out, but then I'm going to ride ahead to the caravan stop. So if you see me there, um, if I'm able to regroup with, with my caravan, I should be able to scrounge up some kind of reward for you for saving my life. It's the least I can do. Aww. It may not be much, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. Look at the rest of the group. Well, we'd, have, we'd have done it anyways, even if yeah, there was have, no reward, so... I think your thanks is plenty. Well, my conscience won't let me rest if I, if I don't at least try. So, I thank you. Well, safe travels, then. Yeah, good luck. Same to you. Uh, the name's Justice, by the way. And the seer's rice pudding. He like scratches her behind the ears. Yep. We're the, quat we're the quatrefoils. Our friends over there are the uh, shark baits. The quatrefoils and the shark baits. Yep. <laughs> All right. I'll remember that. Thanks. Thanks again. And uh, he gives rice pudding one one more check. And seeing as she's mostly fine now, because you almost got her back up to full HP, um, she kind of, like, does a circle around him and does, like, the cat-like rub thing. Mm -hmm. um, and she does go over to you, Angie, and, and kind of nuzzle your hand, too, to thank you. And... I'll give them each a good berry. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Um, and uh, with that, he will climb back into the saddle and... Uh, rush off down the path in the direction you guys came. So, um, you said that Zoph and I were familiar with these creatures. Yes. Right. Are we also familiar with if they are hunted or good for anything, like their parts? Um, why don't you make a nature check? I'm so good at that. Mm-hmm. Bonks. I bet yeah. you look really cool in a more more bounder pelt coat. <laughs> Just saying. I got a fourteen, so that's a fourteen. Maybe so. If... Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, this is difficult because Bonks, you are from a very secluded place. So even though these creatures are very common throughout Jorahas. Um, and Zof, the common knowledge that Zof would know is that these creatures are, um, 
very, very dangerous to domesticate, but very prized as mounts um, once domesticated. So there's a whole trade in Asarius, where Zof is from, where they actually tr train up these and they sell them as mounts or rent, rent them as mounts. Um, for you, Bonks, I think this is like training them and domesticating them is probably less of a priority from where you're from. Um, I think that you probably could make something or something, not you personally, but people, tanners and such could make something from the hide or their tusks might be able to fetch a price somewhere, but you haven't tried to, you've never tried to sell it in actual civilization before. So you're not sh quite sure what it would cost. Okay. Well, might be able to get something from yeah, it. While they're having that conversation with justice, maybe I'll try and, I don't know, salvage something from one of them. Yeah. They don't, they've got, you know, sharp claws, mostly just the tusks are, are very pretty and mm. they might make a good material for sculpting or something. And then the, okay. the coats are very, you know, they've got kind of a tough, thick hide that might make good armor. Okay. Um, Maybe. What do you want me to do? Or can I just have these things? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, here. <laughs> So Why don't have... you make make a survival <laughs> check? Survival. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't be like dexterity. It's a survival check or nothing, bitch. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good though. My survival's plus zero. That's a thirteen. Thirteen. All right. You can have one more bounder hide. All right. And two more bounder tusks. Okay. I'm guessing that's going to be a custom item you need to make. It's just, it's not an item. It's just literally the skin of a dead animal right now. If you're going to I'm gonna add it, get somebody so, to make yeah. it. Well, yeah, it's a custom item. It doesn't exist. Okay, that's all I'm asking. Yeah, I didn't know if there was anything like that. I'm like, I'm not going to write up a, an item no, stat no, block no, for it. If that's what you're asking. No, 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 no. I just didn't know if there was like a... Well, I think there's a box that you can like type in just random items at the bottom. Of your yeah, inventory. It, it's called custom items, which is like why I okay, that's not us. asking about that. No, there's an other possessions box oh, at the bottom oh, that you oh, can yeah, put right. random things in. Oh yeah. Okay. Do that. So we got so you, you can just throw that in there. there. M O O R B O U N D E R. Okay. So four bounder tusk. You said one tusk, one hide, or two tusks? Two tusks, one hide. Okay. So. okay. Thanks. Yep. All right. So, anything else you want to do while you're here before you leave? Okay, I'm going to throw you guys back. You can go ahead and turn the map off. I'm going to turn the map off here. Music stops. <laughs> um, all right, then eventually you regroup with the other party. Um, you make it on your way. Going to put some peaceful music. Because you have now a couple of days of travel ahead um justice mentioned that the caravan stop was about two days walk from where you guys were um and yeah after this you travel for a bit make camp you can mark a long rest um if you want to talk to anyone um now's your chance because you'll basically have another couple of days of peace peaceful travel okay so if there's anything you'd like to do either tonight or the following night anyone you want to talk to either amongst yourselves or with the shark baits <laughs> um now's your chance if not we can continue on our way yeah sure Did 
Do they have anything to say to us? I don't know. <laughs> I, I know. I mean, I could always practice with the daggers if you want, but <laughs> you to. are more than welcome to do that. And we can, we don't have to role play it out. We can just say, you did. Um, I think. Good. I win this time. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You win. Wink. Um, Galsariad would want to study with Soph some more. Uh, Dermot would probably, uh, well, that first night, Dermot would absolutely be healing you, Easter, and tending to your injuries and stuff. Yeah. So if you want I, to be belligerent with Dermot. I don't think I'm belligerent with him, but I think I ask him, like, it feels like ever since, you know, this never used to happen, but it feels like ever since we started this road, like, everything wants to eat me. Do I look <laughs> yummy to you? Like, would would you eat me? Well, no. No, I wouldn't, actually. But I don't really have a taste for humans the way other goblins do. I'm so small. Like, Bonks and Angie have, like, way more meat on them. Well... He kind of looks uncomfortable <laughs> at the conversation <laughs> as he looks over. Says, well, that's true, but sometimes the smallest ones, you and me, myself, we make easy targets. That's why I wear all this armor. Do you get hurt a lot? Well, I do wear this armor. It keeps most of the things from, from scratching, but I do get targeted quite a bit. Easter eyes his armor. Is it, <laughs> is it her size? Uh, like, well, te te he's a small creature because he's a goblin, oh, that's so true. no. That's true. Yeah, yeah. No. I think armor is the way I should go. Yes, I'm sure you'd be able to find some. Yeah. Eventually. It'd be really good. Or you could just be very light on your feet the way Ayo is. Well... I have trained to be an athlete, and that's not what I trained to be. I'm a housekeeper by profession. Oh. Well, then perhaps your biggest skill would be to stay out of everyone's way. That's what I try to do. <laughs> yes. There are a lot of strange and dangerous things out in the wastes. I'm going to have to ask Angie to start turning into delicious animals. <laughs> it's, it's one strategy that could work. <laughs> sure. Yeah, and anyway. He, like, finishes bandaging, like, your arm. It's like, I'm going to leave you to it. <laughs> like, uncomfortably <laughs> walks away. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh. I also think, uh, well, Bonks, if Bonks doesn't have anything he wants to talk to the group about. Nope, not tonight. <laughs> or the following night. Mm -mm. Um, I think Maggie will invite Bonks to sit and play dragon chess with her. On the second evening. Okay, sure. She has her dragon chess board, and she's setting up the pieces. And um, she sees Bonks walking by, and she says, Fancy a game? Bonks will raise an eyebrow and look at this unfamiliar thing that she has. And, sure, I, I don't know what this is, but I'll try. I'm happy to teach you. Please, oh, well, there's going to be a lot of teaching sit. involved. <laughs> I've noticed that you have quite the mind for battle tactics. <laughs> it's not so different from the battlefield, this game. Mm. She sits down and she starts to teach you how to play. Like, he's like, which one's the wizard? And which one's the druid? And which one's the warlock? Well, you see... <laughs> well, you see, this thing works like this, and this thing works like this, and I'm not going to make stuff up because I don't know the first thing about real-world chess. Um, <laughs> except that there's a king and a queen, and the queen is better. He's like, where's um, the pseudo-dragon? 
Yeah. Um, no, and she like enjoys teaching you a bit. And as you guys start to, well, you could roll <laughs> an intelligence check if you want. Sure. To try and see how quickly you pick it up. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. Hang on. Uh, ten. And yeah, you actually it. She's her tactic is to explain it as if you were in a real battle. And I feel like because you have experience out there, you know, fighting things, um, it's actually very uh, efficient way to convey the rules to you. Um, so you actually pick it up over the course of a couple hours. Yeah. Okay. Um, nice way to spend and life. as as she as she feels like you're starting to get uh, more comfortable with what each of the roles of each of the pieces are. Um, she sits back and she says, I'm curious about something. If you don't mind indulging me. Sure. What is your preferred battle tactic when you enter a battle with your comrades? Do you, do you plan, plan to... Do you prefer to plan things out in advance and get a good strategy going even when you don't know what you're up against or do you prefer to just run in and swing your weapons around what is your in uh, focus in most cases we kind of just go in without much planning um, yes, but is this your preferred method? It's become that, I think. I don't, we don't really know any other way. How do you manage it? Uh, <laughs> what well, is your priority once the battle has begun? Um, I think that... For myself, it's probably more of a... I try to play more of a protective role. Um, and not, I don't, I don't like straying too far away from my friends in case they need help. Uh, I like to position myself in, in between the, the enemies, uh, or, you know, in a position that I can, um, you know, make, make my way back or forth if I need to. Um, otherwise it's pretty chaotic most of the time. I think that as, as long as I can keep the enemies away from them, we have some very powerful magic users. And uh, in most cases, they can make the right decisions while I'm there up there sort of trying to deflect the blows. I see. So creating a shield for your friends yeah it didn't really work this last time though they really did not care about me at all they just jumped yes, they over were me quite they were quite mobile weren't they yeah and very very particular with where they wanted to be and they jumped so high that i couldn't even strike at them when they passed me very high and very far indeed what about you well, when I fight with this group, we, I prefer to target whoever it is my friends are targeting. Prefer to gang up on one target at a time, overwhelm them. Don't give them a chance to strike back. It's worked all right so far. Fox nods. Thoughtfully. Yeah, I could see. I could see that being a good tactic, and maybe that's enough to scare some things away. Once they see your strength, they want to. They wouldn't want to risk their lives. Indeed. I'm afraid Io does not agree with me. She says this tactic could be um, could be construed as not honorable. 
Because it's not a fair fight that way. I mean, but your lives are on the line. Anything goes, right? Exactly. And besides, in my experience, people who fight fair don't win. Can I roll insight on Maggie? Is she she has some sure. dark history that she's... <laughs> or Maggie, I don't know. I got a... Oh, actually, I'm proficient in this. I got 12. Let me take a look at my dime. What what race is Maggie again? Is she a... She's an ogre. ogre? Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she rolled real low. Um, I think it's not so much of a dark past that she's trying to hide, but there is that very deep thoughtfulness and very... She's, as she's speaking, she's considering the, the dragon chessboard very seriously. And she's thinking a lot about every move that she makes. Um, it seems to be more of just a logical conclusion that she's made based on her experience rather than a reflection mm. of some okay. past trauma. Okay. Um, why don't you for me where are my notes for this? Um, roll one more intelligence check. Oh, yeah. Here we go. This is the one. Oh, shoot, it is. I got 17. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So intelligent. So intelligent. Oh, scholar. Hold on. I need to find her stat block. Do, 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 do. Okay, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> she got a six. Poor Maggie. Um, so, as the conversation wraps up, she kind of sits back in her chair and she looks at you and she says, Well, you are a quick study. It has been my honor to lose to you, Bonks. I'd like to play again sometime. Yeah, thanks for teaching me. I think you were going easy on me. <laughs> she just kind of smiles. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, couple couple of nights pass peacefully. I don't know. The dragon uh, chess was pretty violent. I don't know if I'd call that peaceful. That it was, was a, so a raging violent. battle the whole time. What a raging battle! On. The eighth day of your journey. You see ahead of you on the path a large stand of trees rising out of the barren wasteland. The leaves of dozens of towering oaks rustle in the breeze, and the scent of a bonfire wafts from a trail of smoke rising from somewhere up ahead. The path through the trees is deeply rutted by the work of countless wagon wheels. A wooden sign posted at the head of the path bears the decorated shepherd's crook that is the, sim the holy symbol of Melora the Wild Mother and the words Emerald Bloop Caravan Stop. And these are like really healthy trees along the lines that we have not seen a lot, right? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Um... Yeah, I think Zof. Yes. <laughs> and let's see. Yeah, Zof can roll a history check to see how much they know about this place. Um, hey. Angie. You can roll a religion check. Oh, Fifteen. Nope. Hmm. 
I got an 18. Nice. So, as you, you've been thinking about it, I think, since um, you encountered justice. And now that you see the words printed on the sign, you remember hearing stories from people who pass through Asarius about their troubles. Um, and you remember that this Emerald Loop caravan stop is indeed a safe and respected waypoint that's been around for about 150 years. Um, it's also said that some of the best hunters in the wastes stop here to sell their catches. And that the best Mastodon Corundal in the Kryn Dynasty is sold here. Best Mastodon what? what? Mastodon Corundal. Corund is, is that a food? It's a type of food. It's like, oh. I think, a steak or something. Hmm. Um, well, guys, you're in, in for a treat. Now that I'm kind of seeing the place and, you know, uh, thinking about it more... I remember back home in Asarius, uh, we would hear from, you know, traders about uh, some mastodon-based meal. I think it's kind of a steak, maybe. Um, oh, it's a, it's they... a rice bowl topped with, ah, yeah, steak and vegetables It's a rice bowl, a rice pudding, uh, topped with a mastodon-type steak and uh, some veggies, and they say it's really good, so... I'm rice pudding. Elevating. Not rice pudding. I said not rice pudding. A rice oh, okay. bowl. <laughs> oh, okay. Phew. You're making my mouth water, though. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, I'll I'll stop anywhere that looks as good as this. This is the best looking place we've been to since we left Jigo. Angie, with your religion check, you remember stories growing up um, from your mother who told you of a treant, once upon a time, a treant named Wandering Oak first seeded of this forest. And that she later entrusted it to a pair of dryads of the Wild Mother, who call themselves the Acorn Sisters. You would also know that the Acorn Sisters permit some logging here, but they harshly punish anyone who takes more than they allow. And the Acorn Sisters were what? Dryads. Dryads, okay. Like, like the one you guys fought, except not corrupted. <laughs> not evil. <laughs> not, not corrupted. Not crazy. Yeah. So, you guys continue to follow the path. The forest pathway opens into a large clearing, nearly a hundred feet across. Music, laughter, and the savory aromas of fresh cooked food and wood smoke drift through the air. On the west side of the clearing stands a full-grown horizon back tortoise. On its back is the homestead of a family of goblins who are making repairs to the structure. On the other side of the clearing, seven colored Seven covered wagons encircle a bonfire, and a rope fence has been set up north of this encampment to contain the wagon's oxen. Welcome to the Emerald Loop Caravan Stop. And I believe we're going to go ahead and call it there so we can delve in to this fun place next time. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh Goblins, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for um, tuning in, and we will see you again very soon. Good night. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night.